All right, first order of business. We're going to retcon the very end of last session because I did it wrong. Uh, Kesselinkov has not attacked yet because we actually have to do a proper combat round with the surprise condition, but since nobody passed their perception check or their passive perception, and she rolled incredibly high, there will be the surprise condition. But that's all the retconning we're going to do. Last we left off. Our adventure is decided to find the wanted arcane practitioner, Egreth Runai, but decided against speaking with Consul Burke Fenador of the Nation of Prospero for more information. Instead, they decided to take up the Volic State's offer of more gold to stop Egreth from falling into the nation's grasp. The group headed east into the Nahusian Pass, two days from the town of Night Hollow. They passed a few merchants from Gloom Coast, and pilgrims presumably from the Kaja Conclave. On the second night, they waited for the agent from the Volic State to meet them. And during Panoply's patrol, she spotted a carefully hidden individual who was watching the camp. Staying her distance, Panoply carefully stalked this individual, who eventually approached the camp. Tensions rose momentarily when Panoply revealed herself and caught the agent off guard. The agent introduced herself as Kessa Lenkov, a younger female elf with attractive but sharp features, dressed in fine leathers and armed with an array of blades and a light crossbow. Kessa made small talk with the group, discussing Egreth Runai at length. It would appear that Egreth had gone a little crazy over the years, and that the Volic State was concerned with the trade and transaction of semi-autonomous robots to buyers with loose lips. Kesselenkov led the group through the mountains at dawn, until they eventually arrived at the entrance of another secret lab, or possible factory about days south of the Nahusian Pass. Kessa told the group that she would look after the horses and keep an eye out for anything interesting while the party dealt with Egreth. As the group entered the factory, they were stopped by a couple of mechanical guards, and a green-skinned individual who vaguely resembled a human. Turkson decided to forge some documents on the fly, in hopes of gaining an audience with Egreth Runai instead of having to fight their way through a factory full of guards and workers. After a long and awkward time, an older lady with snow-white hair, wrinkled skin, and a patch covering one eye entered the chamber. Discussions were to be had over her affiliation with Dr. Thurbley Crolius, her intentions with the factory, and her arrogance in the belief that she could escape the nation of Prospero herself, just like Dr. Thurbley Crolius did. The group tried to persuade her to come with them, and that they would protect her until she made it safely to the Volic State. But this idea was not to Egreth's liking. After much back and forth, no one noticed a shadow moving in the darkness, and the opening of a door from a side passage, nor the unsheathing of a dagger from behind Egreth. Seems that Kesselinkov for whatever reason, decided to hasten this mission, in the best way an assassin knows of, with a blade to the back. And I would like everybody to roll for initiative. Oh man, Oz is hovering over that waiting for you. Oh my gosh! That's so many dice! I see a 20. I see two 20s. Well, we have good news and bad news. The good news is Kesselinkov is not going first. Uh, the bad news is she's going before Egreth Runai. 
So the first round of combat, everybody but Kessa is under the surprise condition, which means when it's your turn, essentially nothing happens. So it's kind of like a free round for Kessa Lenkov until you've taken your turn. Then you can take reactions, but that's it. So Panoply, you would be first. You do nothing in your surprise condition, and now it's Kessa Lenkov's turn. Imagine a perfect O of surprise in the dark. <laughs> yep. So unfortunately, Kestelinkov gets to attack with advantage, and if she hits, her assassin feature gives her a auto crit. Whoa. Oh my god. There's part of the damage. And there's her sneak attack. There it is. And Egrith Runai has to make a constitution saving throw as the poison that is coated on the blade seeps into her blood. And that just barely fails. Or yay? I don't know. What are we rooting for here? What the question? The fuck! I'm glad that she's mad at that one and not us. Oh, it made me roll the con check there. Shoot. And I hit X. So there'll be a brief pause for effect here. Is she dead? Is she not dead? Is she half dead? She still fails. She's all the way dead. She's lying on the ground, bleeding out, with poison running through her veins. And Kessa looks toward Kaim and gives you a wink as she pulls the blade out from the back of Egreth, right where her kidney was. She says something... Just loud enough for you to hear. Make it a thousand gold if you don't bring her back. And Kessa walks down the hall and disappears. Bye. All right, so now we'll just go through. Everybody has the surprise condition. All right, top of the round. Panoply, it is your turn. Okay, so peering through, can I assume I saw her briefly as she slaughtered this person? Yes. Uh, did any of the minions seem to see her? Are they turning around like, Ugh! or They turned around. Okay. But they didn't catch it. Oh, great. So are they turning back to us? Yes. Can I move ever so slightly here? This other door is open too? Yes. Okay. And just because I don't feel like shooting time right now, and I will shoot this little one first. And why not cast Hunter's Mark? And if you are shooting from there, you are just barely in darkness, so okay. you would be invisible. Did it not hit it? There we go. Okay. Uh, it had a reaction, but it doesn't work when it's getting hit. It's getting spanked lightly. 
And then I do my again shoot on it. Ooh! Good aim. Thank you. Did Arvin really say that? Hell yeah. And... Didn't even need your deadly ambush. Well, hell. All right. That is my turn. Oops. Uh, cat in the way. Servitor thrall. Moves up against Kaim and going with basic protocol, seeing uh, its maker bleeding out on the ground, claws at Kaim. Because clearly you are the reason for this. Programming is imperfect. All right, one of the green-skinned individuals its eyes glow silver as it looks toward Kaim, the closest individual, and unleashes a psychic lash. Uh-oh. I believe it's going to ask you for a wisdom saving throw. Not so wise. Right. Kaim fails with a three. He only takes four psychic damage. It's like a really bad headache. Turxian, it is your turn. It seems that all eyes are in your group for these automatons can only believe that it has to be you guys because Egrith was alive before you came. All right. Um, well, let's see. Are the how big are these doors? Can I can I see through them from where I am, or do I need to move? Yeah, you can see through them. They're like huge, oh, uh, swinging doors. All right. Well, I'm gonna do what has seemingly been my most effective spell to date and launch a web here into the middle of the room. Did I restrain all of them? Fail, 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 fail. Yep. Well, that's hot. And, uh... I will end my turn. Arvin, it is your turn. Um. <clears throat> well, shoot. Sure. <laughs> Should we go back to back just like we did last time? I think so. I think so. Nadir's mischief. And. Not the maple syrup. We'll see. I got a roll for it. Um, there is a button. I Am I in it too? No, just barely. Ah, apple pie. Apple pie? The smell of apple pie fills the air. I'm so hungry now. Don't blame you. So, wisdom saving throws. At. One is not charmed. Not at all. Ooh, neither is that one. Okay. Oh, this gets advantage. Okay. Why is your rolling 19 for everything? This thing gets advantage. What's going on? That one failed. And this one gets advantage. What's your DC? I think it's like 15. Um, DC, where am I looking on my character sheet for that? Um, it's under 
spell book at the bottom. 15. Yeah. Save DC. Okay, one of them is charmed. Hey, all right, let's go. And as a bonus action, of course, we are going to do Bardic Inspiration on Kime. Dun, da, 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 dun. Of course, it doesn't want to add the charmed condition. And that will end my turn. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to remember that. The Charmed One. So it can't attack you, but it can attack other people. Yeah, it's friendly to me. Okay. Well, it's going to attempt a Psychic Lash Kime. Come on, be wiser, Kaim. That seems wise. I believe you passed. Half damage? Yep, you took half. Oh, it rolled well, though. Holy cow. Okay. Alright, the Demos is going to... Make a strength... Is it a strength check or save to get out of your web? Uh, I think it's a save. I think it's a save. Let me double check. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Each creature that starts its turn has to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh... Creature restrained by the webs can use its action to make a strength check to become no longer restrained. Alright, well, it's still rolled a three. So that was uh, fantastic. Uh, the Servitor Thrall will do the same thing. Try to break out. It fails terribly. Kaim, is your turn. Kaim will bonus action Echo right in front of Arvin, and he will attack the closest target, trying not to get into the web. Oh, I thought you were going to attack me. Uh, you have advantage on this attack because it's restrained. And that'll end my turn. Alrighty, Gilfy. Alright, uh Gilfie's going to I believe it was a sixty feet. Let me double check that before I get too far. Yeah, she's a flying speed of sixty feet. Uh sixty and then she's gonna dash another 60 feet to try and see if she can see where Kessel Linkov went off to. Okay, um... You see her... Oh, shoot. Try to take her off the map. <laughs> see her here. Okay. Uh, so she probably would have gone, like, here above the barrels. And uh, that will end Gilfie's turn. All right. Uh, Simon, he's cheering you all on. Die! Did you really say that? That's so cute. Yeah, it's like that little kid meme where he's like fist pumping at the sports ball game. Sports ball. Uh. Panoply, your turn. Panoply will move Hunter's Mark, which I'm just going to recast it without casting it. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are already concentrating. Yes. Yes. Don't consume. Ta -da. Okay. And then I shoot it. This, this one over on the side. I'm just like going on this side 
figuring Kaim is handling the other side superbly. Right, cousin? Sure. Still in darkness? Yes. And they're restrained. Ooh, big dice. Anvil. That's good, I think. Excellent. I like where I am, and I will stay where I am. All right, Egrith is bleeding out for the second turn. Servitor Thrall. It will swing at Kaim. Check restrained condition. Attack rolls against it have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Alright, so swings a kind with disadvantage. Oh, there was a nat 20 in there! <laughs> That's too bad. Still counts as critting kind. Nope. Alright, this uh, Hypnos Majin in the back is going to continue psychic lashing Kaim. Oh, big dice. Oh, panoply. We probably need to get them. Oh, and Kaim failed. Ow. No. Oh, oh wait. Did the Bardic Inspiration do nothing? Oh, it oh. fucked the 20 roll. Here, roll a... God damn it. Roll a d20. Yeah. Did it not add on there, or what? You're yeah, a... something's going wrong with Bardic, Bardic Inspiration. You're a force of chaos. Oh! It still succeeds, because the 11 plus 2 is 13. He needed a 12. So I will add... There you go. Eight back to you. You're not bloodied anymore. Thank you. Um, Turxian, your turn. Alright, um... Turxian... I really don't want to do... anything too crazy, because I really like the fact that they're restrained. I don't want to mess with that right now. Um, are any of them looking... I guess none of them are bloodied, huh? Mm, no, the front two are damaged. Okay. Uh, Turxian is going to... Uh, cast Chill Touch at the bottom right one. I believe, yeah, I'm definitely in range for that. Cool. And that will end this turn. Righty, Arvin. Roll for your ridiculous spell. Let's load it up. Bouquets of flowers appear all around, and each creature in the cube must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or be blinded. I should have been with advantage, but that one passes. These things, however, do not have advantage. Let me know when they're all rolled. Or actually, while you're rolling there, I'm just going to use... Uh, put Bardic Inspiration back on Mr. Kime. Yay, I heard the music! Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. And I just realized why I couldn't put the charm condition on the other creatures. They're immune to charm. 
Ah, okay. You're not immune to blind, I hope. Nope, but they have advantage against it, against the save. Okay, I still see a couple blinded people there. Uh, does co still concentrating and keeping that spell up, is that my action for the turn? No. You can do any other action other than cast another concentration spell. Awesome. Well, I'm just going to shoot a crossbow bolt. Um, so I click crossbow. And since it's the web, I get advantage? Correct, because they're restrained. They're restrained. Will it help me? It did. Boom. Take that. And my turn is over. All right, the rear hypnos Cue new song. Going to do what it knows best in Psychic Lash Kind. Ow. Ow. Bardic Inspiration again, but... Oh. It, it didn't... Okay, roll a d20 again. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, okay. So that's a 10 total. Okay. You're not wise. 1d0. Okay, I see the issue there. I'll fix that later. Um, This guy is still restrained. He pulls out a crossbow and shoots Turxian. Oh! Wait, who? What? Uh, this guy here. Oh. Disadvantage, because he's restrained. Okay, misses. Crossbow bolt whizzes by you. A blind and restrained servitor thrall is going to attempt to unrestrain himself. Wildly flailing his arms. Oh, okay. Kaim, your turn. Okay. Um, Mr. Echo over here is going to say, fuck Arvin. <laughs> <laughs> that seems appropriate. And he is going to walk over here. And, um, I will attack from my Echo on that one. Okay. Oh, that hits. Okay. Careful, it swung at two different people there. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm assuming you were not attacking the... Who are you attacking? I'm attacking the one in the back, not the thrall in the front. Right. Okay. okay. Um, I will bonus action, second wind. And I... Action, special... Attack from the Echo's position, so I, I, can I attack from the Echo twice? If you use Unleashed Incar in Unleash Incarnation. Yeah. Okay, so then I will use that. Let's use the ability and attack from the Echo again. Yeah, get him. Nice. And... That'll end my turn. So, 
as the blade from the Echo is biting into this like teal green skin ish color creature, it doesn't bleed normal blood. What you see coming out of the wounds is the color and consistency of mercury. Whoa. Don't like it. Is that the same as we, what we saw in the lab? No, different. Um, it's Gilfie's turn. Gilfie saw Kess, uh dash down this hall about 60 feet. Okay. Um, so come back into the room then and I guess there's really not much for her to do because everybody already is going to have advantage so she's just going to hang out sounds good Simon is still cheering. He doesn't know what he's cheering for. You can do it. Panoply, your turn. Panoply heard Arvin and is like, alrighty. And, well. Oh, this is hard. No, it's just gonna kill that one. Let's <laughs> stick on the target. Oh, quavers, settles. That is my turn. Very nice. Change this uh, one. Alrighty. The servitor thrall that is also blinded and restrained is going to still slash out at Kaim with quadruple million disadvantage. Oh, that's <laughs> so sad. Oh, poor guy. It is thrashing wildly. Um, Hypnos Megan in the back is going to Psychic Lash Kaim. Oh, that's a big one. Oh my. That's what she said. All right. More damage to Kaim. He's looking rough. There's like blood coming out of his ears. Uh, Turkson, your turn. Still trying to answer that stick riddle? <laughs> uh, seeing that the Hypnos Megan seem to be the most effective right now, it's going to shift his focus over to them. And he's just going to cast uh, Chill Touch again at the one by the shadow. Big roll. And I guess that will end his turn. Wait, you missed with advantage? <laughs> roll, the, roll the two and a three. Better than your one and two. Arvin, it is your turn. Arvin is casting Healing Word. Uh, let's see. At higher levels, when he casts a spell using the healing, increases by 1d4 for each slot level above second. Okay, so I want to cast that as a higher level. I want to do second level heal on Kaim. Cast. Normal. Okay. 
that work? Let me manually add that. I don't know what I do. You moved him. You scooted. And, of course, I need to... What sorcery is this? Turkson, are you moving me again? <laughs> oh no, my spell's gone. My spell's not in my list anymore because I uh, used another second level. Oh, for the chart? Yeah, so I gotta roll just a 1d4, and then I actually probably need to look it up on my other sheet. Uh, I can see it. Okay, can I just roll 1d4? Yep. Okay. Oh, this is the same one, charm. And they can't be charmed. Apple pie falls from the sky. Ah. Well, these ones can be charmed. Okay, well, we'll give that a try. And while you're doing those rolls... Dun, 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 dun. Well, he's not charmed. And they are no longer blinded. Aw, stupid one roll. All right, Hypnos Majin, doing what it does best in Psychic Lashing Kind. Oh my god, oh you're my wrong! God. <laughs> Dude! Bye, Kaim. Uh, I'm scared. Nice knowing you. Gotta get this wisdom save. Uh, it still says 1d0, but I'm gonna use it anyways. Let's go! Oh, 13 succeeds, but I'll still use it. Yeah. I don't know what it's doing. I thought I fixed it, but I clearly didn't. Alright, well... That, uh, that heal actually kept Kaim from dropping. The other one is going to try to crossbow Turxian again with disadvantage. Oh, shoot, I had Kaim selected. Oh, well, it missed both. <laughs> Split a zero and two. Yeah, it ricocheted. All right, this thrall is going to try to get out of this stupid web. Hey! Oh my god, no! Um, Kaim, your Echo will get an attack of opportunity on this one. I will take it. Gets out of the web and attacks Kaim. Aw, oh, it misses. Kaim, your turn. Oh man, um... Kaim will action healing hands on himself. Okay. so pitiful okay and um he will unleash an incarnation actually hold on hold on um, i believe you have to attack have to attack damage. so i will action search there you go and i will attack uh this act this guy over here It's get him and looking mercurial. Uh, I can't risk it. I'm gonna unleash our incarnation again. It's my, my last slot and attack again. And 
and my echo will move. And that'll end my turn. So your echo swings once, cuts deep into this thing. Then the second attack runs the blade through the stomach of this creature. And as the echo withdraws the blade, the flesh and skin and bones of this creature burst into a small flame as its body disintegrates in a harmless burst of fire and smoke. Gilfie's turn. Um, Gilfie's just going to hang tight. She's not doing anything right now. Okay. Simon's cheering. Panoply, your turn. Panoply is getting really mad. This thing hasn't died yet. Shoot it! Now it's dead. Yeah! And just like the other one, it disintegrates into a harmless burst of fire and smoke. Can I see the other one from where I am? I can't, can I? The one way back here? Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. I... Stay put, then. Alrighty. Servitor Thrall, next to Kaim, disadvantage claws! It's just swinging like a mad robot. I'm just holding my shield up. Alright, the... Majin. Psychic Lashes Kaim. Let's go. On, succeed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> You all watch as Kaim it looks like he has a stroke almost and just goes unconscious. Oh, no. That's just no longer a migraine. Tur uh, Turkscene, your turn. Can you remind me the rules uh, we have, for the custom rules we have for healing potions? It's an action still, but It'll it's... be the full value of the potion. Okay. And can unconscious targets willfully fail a constitution save? Yes. Okay. If that's the case, then I am going to cast a Vortex Warp on Kaim. And... I'm going to bring him into the room behind me next to Simon. How do I fail this? Do I just close it? Uh, just roll it and it doesn't matter. He stays put. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Anything else for Turkscene? Nope, that'll end his turn. All right, Arvin, you saw Kaim disappear, disappear before your eyes. What the Frank just happened? You are now the front line. Uh, all right, I get out my shield. Here we go. You have a shield? Oh, hell no. <laughs> his words are his shield. I was his shield. Yeah, Kaim was my shield. All right, back to blinding anybody who's in Nathier's Mischief Square. It's a dex save, right? Dexterity? Yes. Does blind work on psychic attacks? Well, that one failed. No, I don't think so. Um, it would, because it has to see you. But it hasn't... They have advantage, so they haven't really failed. This one, however, failed. 
None of my spells work because they're all robots. I don't know what to do. Anything else on your turn? Um, yeah. Can I? Is there anything I can do to to help Kaim? I don't know this game. What do I do? Do you have any first level spell slots left? Yeah, lots of them. You can cast um, healing word as a bonus action. Yeah, I want to do that. What does that do? Just keep him from dying? Brings him back from unconscious. Let's do it. Oh, yes. Time. With our powers combined. Healing word. Uh, so that's my bonus action. Can I? So you haven't done your ma your regular action, which can still be shoot your crossbow. Right. And or cast a vicious mockery. Can I run up and douse this torch? Sure. Let's do you it. Have, you have like a water skin or something? Yeah. I got water. Or I can just stomp it into the ground. Okay, it's doused. Okay. Shoo. Okay. That'll be your action. Thank you. That was it. Uh, did it go? Yeah, that one is out. Okay. How much is dark now? It's about here. <laughs> oh. All right. This servitor thrall gets on the box and attacks Arvin. And crit Sarvin! That was supposed to be Kaim! Somebody has to be crit. Alright, you take 8 damage. Did it ask you? It did ask you for a concentration check. Beautiful. And you succeed. Good. You only needed a 10. Alright, Kaim, you are laying on the ground. Not where you once were, but you're, uh, you're back takes half your move to stand up okay um time will not stand up he'll just kind of stay on his knees sort of the ground put out his hand and summon echo yep and he the echo will attack this one you have advantage on that one because it is blind and restrained. Still flailing wildly. Ooh, big hit. Maybe. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Thing is barely hanging on. And no more unleash, no more action surge, no more second wind. <laughs> No more healing hands. Fuck, I'm done. All right, Gilfie. Gilfie's hanging out. Okay. Simon was going to rummage through Kaim's pockets and then goes, You were asleep. That's his turn. Do you Panoply, want to call your it turn? Panoply is secretly so delighted. You she moves by Kaim in the darkness is just... She knows you're up there. The other two are back here. <laughs> and, like, Kaim on his knees suddenly feels a boom on the back of his head and says, Stay down, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to move up and move Hunter's Mark to the Hypnos Mage. I'm going to contest uh, that and say she needs to do an unarmed attack. You couldn't even see me. I'd have advantage, too. <laughs> oh, fuck. Take it like it. And the advantage. And then calls out to Arvin Get back here, you idiot. <laughs> Good. You just hear a voice in the darkness. Someone needs to be the tank of the group. 
right, Kyle obviously the can't cut it. Blind restrained one is going to flail about and misses Arvin. The Hypnos Magen will try to psychic clash Arvin. Arvin is the new tank. Right, bring it on. You make it look so easy. Easy. And concentrating. You can do everything at once. It's just singing and all good stuff. Turksy in your turn. Alright, um, Turxian is going to... Seems like that Hypnos Magen hasn't bothered to try and move at all, so he says, fuck it, and launches a firebolt at him. I like this since track. he's in the web, that's an additional 2d4. Nuke it! Uh... I didn't roll with the you... Oh, I did something wrong. Yeah, um, ignore that attack, redo the attack. You have advantage on your attack roll, by the way, because he's right. restrained. I put you the added the 2d4 in the wrong spot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice damage. And that will end his turn. Alright, Arvin. You have two fools next to you. One's looking really rough. Yep. And I know they're robots, but does Vicious Mockery actually do damage against them? You were told by Kesselinkov that poison probably doesn't work. Okay. But psychic damage, maybe? Or we don't know. I don't think it say. would. I don't think it would, right? Right, guys? Do you have a rapier or something? A dagger? Yeah, I got a dagger. I can stab it. You don't oh, want to clean We've that before you cut against your one hit point creatures. Um, And I get advantage because he's in the web, right? Correct, and blinded. And oh, blinded. Thing, but yeah. Do it! it! <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> what a poke beast. it in the eye, poke it in the eye. <laughs> you screwed up for five points. <laughs> I'm a beast. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. The um, most pitiful crit ever. That's not the right button. What did I do? Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a thing. Epic moments in D&D history. Why is it not? Oh, I have some. Critically hit the one hit point creature for five damage. <laughs> okay, I'll take a, a hit, I think, but... You're gonna run away? Yeah, is it 30 feet I can move? Yep. Okay, I was, hopefully that mage can't attack that far. It misses you. Okay. Um, and then... We're gonna use Bardic Inspiration as my bonus action. Panoply is inspired by my amazing loot skills. <laughs> Alright. The Servitor Thrall is just going to swipe at the Echo because it's not the most intelligent creature. Oh, misses. That teetered on the 17. Kaim, your turn. Um, I'm going to risk it and have my echo walk up to the servitor. Or, sorry, the magen. I do I think believe we determined he... you cannot be opportunity attacked. Because you're not a creature. Creature, correct. And so I will attack um, this guy. Okay. And I 
Is it with advantage since oh, it is with strength? advantage? Okay. Yeah. Desperately needed that. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Oh. Okay. Never mind. It's dead. The hurry thing is dead. Disintegrates in a harmless burst of fire and smoke. And um that was twenty-five. You know what? Bonus action teleport. Okay. And that'll end my turn. Alright, Gilfie's turn. Um, does Kaim have to make a dexterity save? Yes. Wait. Is that web burned? What is the... What is the it's object? only oh, burned... Oh, it's only burned in the area where the, the guy creature was. was. Yeah. Okay, that's alright. Yeah, so you need to make a deck save. So you just teleported He's into the middle, middle of my web. And <laughs> Kaim is restrained. That's okay. Alright. Gilfie's turn. And web is, is um, tough terrain, right? So You are yeah. restrained currently. No, I mean, I mean this guy. Would he If he tries yes. to go for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Gilfie's just going to hang out. Okay. Panoply. Panoply turns to Turxian briefly and says, if she's not doing anything, we need to keep watch. <laughs> and then we'll shoot the last dude after moving Hunter's Mark to it. I think you attacked with an arrow and not a bow. Oh shit. Yeah, sorry. For some reason it hasn't Still been hits. deducting my arrows. Hits all the way. Uh What? Okay. That Should make weird. her just throw the arrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, anything else on your turn? No. Alright, Turxian. Uh, stop concentrating is just a free action, right? Correct. Alright, I'm just gonna drop web. Oh no. And... There Deleted you go. The wrong thing. <laughs> I'm in danger. And then I am going to hold. Is the servitor of thrall? It's metal. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna hold my action until Gilfie's turn. Okay, Arvin. Uh, I still want that square up. Yeah, I accidentally deleted it. Damn it! All right, can I do a one d four? Yep. I'm gonna do it. That's three. I don't have my spell. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, I got it, I got it, I got it. I think it's maple syrup. Each creature in the cube must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or begin giggling until the start of your next turn. A giggling creature is incapacitated and uses all its movement to move in a random direction. <laughs> all right, Kaim, you have to make a saving throw. <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> Does he suddenly think Irvin is the sexiest man alive? <laughs> if you guys ever played Final Fantasy X, you know oh, yeah. Titus, his laugh. Oh yeah. Ha 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 ha! That was good. <laughs> Things gonna move toward- or does Kai move? No, oh wait, I still have a turn. <laughs> oh a yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, that's- I keep thinking that's your action, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Kaim has to move in a random direction. Do we have... Is there a directional die in Foundry? Isn't that on his turn? I'm gonna consider... Oh, is it? I'll roll it just a d8. Start from... Well, hold up. Is it? Is it move on his turn or move immediately? Let's see. Can the creature's incapacity use all its movement to move in one direction? So it's six over here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you do. Uh, this way. As far as I can go? Yeah, into the corner. You go sit on the box. You put me in timeout! <laughs> Alright, what's and your I'm, action, Arvin? And I'm laughing all the way to the corner. Thanks. Wait, which way did you go? How far away are you? Oh my gosh, you're so far away. Wait, is it on his turn He's he moves? I'm, I'm a little confused by the... It says is incapacitated and uses all of its movement to move in a random direction. Yeah, so it's probably on his turn. Okay. Okay. Um, what the heck? I'm gonna try Vicious Mockery. Let's see if it works. Boom. Aw, oh, damn it. You didn't target it. Yeah, it did. It said, uh... No damage. Well, it says no targets to save. Try it again. There we go. I had it targeted. I must have untargeted it too fast. Woo! You kill it with words. Oh my gosh. Ha, it ha, is ha, not ha. immune to psychic. <laughs> and then Kaim giggles at that and runs into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Panoply claps in the darkness. <laughs> All right. Look at if that you idiot. guys don't mind, we're going to take a break now. Sure. Oh right. my god. Come back at 15.
You survey the battlefield. Unfortunately, it looks like Egreth Runei is completely bled out. Uh, there are two piles of robes and clothes from where the Majin were, and a bunch of destroyed robots. 
What all would you like to do? Turkson feels a hand on his arm. If somebody's coming, like if the nation of Prospero finds this, we should take her head and burn the body and search this place as fast as possible. Yell if there's something. And um, Panoply's going to go out to the entrance. Hey, we can just have Gelfie watch the entrance. There's two entrances. You hear as she walks off. Behind Egrith. Uh, Turkson will have send Gilfi to go out the door that uh, she had followed the assassin earlier. Okay. Kind of will just check for our pulse. Most likely nothing. Very cold. Unfortunate. But I said did say we get paid more if we don't try anything. It's not like we can. I don't see how we can revive her. I certainly can't. <laughs> I just pretend to look in my pockets. Well, there's nothing I can do either. I tried. I'd like to look on uh, Egret's body to see if I can't find any nature spell spellbook on her or anything, just knowing that she was a wizard. Okay. She wears very nice looking bracers on her arms. And in her little wizard belt there is a wand and she does have a spell book on her and then there is a um like a little orb does it look like any of the orbs that we found uh, in the previous place? No. Okay. Um, I'll take all those and uh, just toss them in my backpack for now. And uh, take a look at them later. Okay. Uh, anything in the crates or in the room? Uh, looks like pieces used to make more of these robots. Very cool. And then where Kaim and Turkseen are, are huge chunks of Aether Moat. I don't think we could take any of that either mode for ourselves, can we? They are massive. The only time could carry them. I'm I don't think I have the strength. Do you have two <laughs> sturdy horses? Uh, but carrying something this massive would draw a lot of attention. Attention that we don't want. Yeah, we got quite a few days to get back to. Uh, which way did uh, what's her face run off to? She went down south. this way. South. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know how much we want to look around, seeing as how we're all pretty beat up at the moment. How fast did you go down that hall, Panoply? The one, like that we came from. Yeah. Like immediately after. That was like my. It's. She was almost contemplating going before combat ended, but... Okay. Um, do you get out to the end of the cavern, or the 
the tunnel. And when you get to the end, you sort of peer around to make a perception check. Because it's immediate, do I still have Bardic Inspiration? Yeah, it's only five minutes. And Bardic is ten. God damn it, did it fuck it up? Yeah, it's alright. Yeah. Um, you peer out in the distance, you see your four horses tied up to a tree, and in the branch of the tree, cleaning her blade, is Kessa. It's Lenko, that's right. And I don't see it. Like, if I look at the landscape around, like, there's nothing... Nothing else. Nope. I will approach her. Alright. Be a couple more minutes until that happens, then. Okay. In the meantime, Kaim, Turksian, and Irvin. Um, you guys do see just from here... There's another one of those blue teal skinned things, but it's kind of standing inert. Oh, what did I walk into? Um, as you walk into here, there are two robot things building bigger robot things. They're still going? These ones, yeah. They're just building robots. Do you... Do you guys speak common? One, one, zero, zero, one, one. Simon. Or Simon. Simon! Yes. <laughs> do you know anything about this? What's happening here? They appear to be building more war machines. I'm not sure the politics here on this continent, but isn't that forbidden? Except for the nation of Prospero? Technically. Guess these robots aren't gonna provide much, so I'm just gonna look around. I'll try mm, this yeah, this guy. area very much looks like a area where they put together parts of robots. There are these conveyor belts slowly moving along with robot parts. God, this place is huge. And this area where you went to looks like an office with pieces of paper, scrolls, books, notes. And then, Arvin, you find a room that has human-sized crates. Uh, I'll just hold off on those for a minute. While they're doing that, Panoply, you approach Kessa. And she looks your way as you, uh approach her, done cleaning her blade, and she sheaths it. So what do you think the chances are of the Nation of Prospero creeping up anytime soon? She looks at you. Um, give it about a day. Okay. At least that's what I have been informed of. This 
probably a good move, by the way. They weren't. She wasn't going to be convinced. Yeah, she's crazy. She um, tosses you a purse from the treetop. And as she tosses it to you, she says, That's my share. I said, 1,000 if you don't help her and... Well, you'll get the remaining 750 from the two ambassadors. That's the difference. Is... Is there any... Well, how do I say this? Is there any way to destroy this place? Um, there is, but would require some work. Don't think we have the resources at the time to do so. Panther looks like she wants to say something else and just turns and walks back in. Okay. Um, as you all peruse around, uh, Arvin, Kaim, and Turkson make an investigation roll. Fumbling around, you find various different papers, documents. Some of them look like they might be receipts or work orders, something like that. Uh, Kaim, you do find a ledger that looks like it has something to do with a most recent order. And there is a name on it that catches your attention that says the Queen's Waif. Isn't that Arvin's old scary group? Not my scary group. I know of her. Okay. I know but... of the group. You do recall that they had some kind of servitor robot with them. Yeah, it looks like they've done a little bit of business with the locals up here. Interesting. I wonder if they were ordering some of those uh, mage in to help them out. Um, after that time you enter that room there, this looks like a forge where they are forging the armor and plates and pieces to the robots. And once again, there's one of those teal-skinned mage in, but it looks pretty much inert, but the robots are still working. And this time, Panoply, you return back into the factory. It's alone. Kessa didn't come with me, did she? That I can tell. No. She stayed at the tree. Kind of looking north from the way you came in. Uh, like, north to the Nehusian Pass. Like, as, as you left her, she's now cleaning her crossbow and oiling it. So, damn, the other thing I wanted to make sure I did grab from Egrip's corpse was uh, the letter that I forged. Mm. Yes, make, very good. Make sure that I did not leave that behind. Um, very good. Turkson didn't do it, I would uh, look at those bracers that she had. Not bracers, but um, arm guards, whatever they are. Yeah, I believe Turkson, Turkson just put them in a bag or something. Okay. I think. 
Yeah, I just I shoved everything I found on her into a bag to identify later when I have time. Time? Did you want to check out these human-sized crates in the, the far north room? I'm as busy in the um, conveyor belt right now. Can you just ride it? Is oh, working? sorry. On, on Egrith, there was uh, two platinum and thirty-six gold and twelve silver. Crate. And what was that, Arvid? There's some human-sized crates way to the north. I didn't know if you wanted to take a peek in there, or if there's anything I, in there. I did. I was too scared to do it by myself. Is it here? These? Yeah. Yeah. As I see people, I just say, Casa doesn't think the nation of Prospero will be here unless it's for another day, but I think we should leave as soon as possible. Sounds good. Yeah. Your investigation role would cover basically you guys exploring this area. Um, and it just looks like a bunch of ledgers, documents. Maybe some of the documents are plans for making various different machines. Robots. Kind Have we gone through the entire upper level? Because there's also a lower level there. No, yeah. there... There's a door back here. Oh, Kaim went in there and it's just a forge. Okay. There's a low Should level we? over here, but before we go farther, Kaim is actually going to take a, his crowbar, crowbar out and try to prop one of these crates open. Okay, I mean, they're not... They're just nailed down. It's nothing crazy. As you crow, open it with a crowbar, it's a well-packaged war robot like the ones you just destroyed is there any rolls? um like two address or anything any information uh in the ledger you had there was when it mentioned the queen's waif there was 10 units shipped another 20 to be prepared well see Sorry, Pan, you can, you can go. Oh, just, should we burn these notes and stuff? You know, the plans? Like, what we don't, we should take what we want and then not leave other things. I would uh, say take what we want and try our best not to leave any indication that we were here. I think we should take her head for proof. Yep. I and I think, think Essa is more than enough proof. Uh, I don't think she's going with with us. <laughs> she threw me this, and I hold up the sack. She said, "This is her share," but we need some kind of proof, otherwise, you know. Er, did mention bringing the head back as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, we should just. This forge is really hot, and I think that getting rid of the body would just. What? What was... Okay, so there was indication of a portal in the other area. I don't remember, like, in the other forge. Could we fake a portal or make some false notes on portals? How do you do this, Simon? How do you make a portal? <laughs> well, it takes some time and resources Anaplay, what are you trying to make portals for? No, maybe they'll just think she took a portal somewhere you know, like the other place I didn't know this uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to lay down some false tracks, guys we could make portals. I wouldn't want to go back home. We can't make portals. But if we left a page of notes about portals, maybe... Well, what would be they... wrong about her just missing entirely? That's true. I mean, there's blood on the floor in there, too. <laughs> and Mercury. After about 
30 minutes have gone by, the robots working stop. And they go inert. They're not working overtime today. Interesting. Those guys are not Postal Service robots. They look like they turned off. Do we want to go check the lower level out in our current state? No. You guys look like hell. Thank you. I would you... like to peek. But we don't want to rest too long. You always say that, and you always do more than peek. We don't want to rest too long, though, because we don't know how much time we have. Yeah, I don't think we have like time, time right. to to rest. We could, we could do like an hour, and I could... I mean, and I put my palm over the other and... Who needs these? And I hold up the berries. Point at Kaim. We're taking a short rest then. I don't really need it. Well, you're gonna need it eventually because you're boneheaded. Yeah, I'll take one anyways. Where are you guys so I can focus on you? <laughs> He's not boneheaded enough. If, uh... Thank you. <laughs> that psychic lashing... This heals you for one, and you can add nine more. <laughs> Are we doing a quick short rest, then? Is that what you guys want to do? I... can go outside. Like, I don't need to rest, so I can just patrol, and, um... Do you guys want to rest? I definitely think we do need a patrol. Did you get hit at all, Turxian? Nope. Well, I mean, maybe he could look at some of the objects we found, right? You do that um, cool thing. Yeah, I could do that. Or, I mean, with resting, I could also just cover just a little bit more of my spellcasting capacity as well. Okay, well, I'm going to go outside and keep watch. And um, can Gilfie, like, sit at the entrance, maybe, so I could signal her? Or sure. She's she's sitting at one entrance already. Do you want her at the other one? Probably closer to the horses, just in case we have to leave in a hurry. Sure. Uh, don't think I'm definitely not in range of telepath tele or telepathically communicating with Gilfi, so I'll follow uh, or I'll walk back to the uh, so enjoy is she the end range. I'm gonna talk to you. Uh, is she a real owl? I mean... Does she speak owl language? I, I, I don't know if owls have a language. Oh, well, everything does. I mean, she's she's real, but she's... Fae. And more or less. Sometime in an uh, day off... We should try it. Try... I mean, I could do it. They just... I mean, it's not like... It's not like what? you have conversations about literature, but... I mean... I'm just... I could talk with an animal, is what I'm saying. Like, I can talk with animals for the most part, but I just haven't tried because I didn't know she was actually an animal. I mean, you're welcome to try. Okay. Maybe not now where we're in danger, but like we're resting somewhere for a day. Sure. Uh, I'll tell Gulfie to go sit back at the other entrance. Okay. And I'm just going to go out and Kess was looking north toward the Nahuzen Pass, and I'm going mm -hmm. to kind of keep watching that direction, making some very wide circles. So, like, if I had to hot foot it back to the place and warn Gilfie, I could. Okay. She is hanging out by the horses, and she's making a small fire and cooking some food. Short rest it up. Alright, you guys can do short rest. 
I, I think we decided that you cannot, I cannot cast identify during a rest, right? Correct. You'd have to spend the extra 10 minutes. That's uh, fine. And I'll, then let I'll me know if anybody's going to roll a, a dice and you can add, I get a 1d6 to add to that. Just one. Time will definitely. Yeah, you get to add. <laughs> one. <laughs> So you to add another one to your hit points. Okay, well then I'll keep going. Oh boy, I'm gonna use all my dice. Here we go. I guess I'll, I can add, throw another one. Add seven? No. Nine. Wait, no. I add one. You get one yeah. bonus from me. You're welcome. Thank you. His songs of rest just aren't quite what you're looking for. I was do the, doing soothing beach noises and then mimic to seagull really loud all of a sudden you also have a bunch of uh magic shrooms oh yeah you ate the good berries right how many does she give me you have nine left oh you could probably save one of the dice uh that last one was a big one so probably not I'll, I'll keep some good berries on the side. So I'll use uh, five good berries. So I'll have four left over. All right. Pocket berries. Simon sits on a crate while you do that. And he's like reading. He grabbed some of the notes and ledgers and is reading them. Find anything interesting, Simon? Yes. What did you find? Egrith. And he pauses. She was selling to the Queen's Waif, which I believe is in steep light. Dr. Thurbly Crolius was also involved with the Queen's Waif. Well, we had heard about them in steep light. How was Dr. Thurbly Crolius involved? That's how he would obtain his subjects. He hired them. Oh. Interesting. Does it say what job they were hired for? To bring in test subjects oh boy this has sounded pretty devious do you know was dylan weeks a test subject simon stares at you for a very long awkward amount of time i was not privy to that information Are we all rested up? You all, sh you sure are. Eventually, Panoply returns. Nothing exciting happened on your 
patrol. Um, eventually, Kessa Lenkov puts out the fire, eats her food, and appears to nap with her back up against a tree. And Kaim and Arv just rush over to the door. <laughs> Let's go! Panoply, you ready to do some exploring? Uh, sure. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll come back periodically and check in. Like, after about an hour, I figure I can calculate that. Oh, shit. Is there a book thingy? There you go. Well, we may not have needed to put false notes about a portal. As you... As Kaim just barges through doors. Oh my god, Kaim. <laughs> you enter a room with very strange glowing braziers that look like they have burning aethermo in them. And there is a huge giant portal with a active purple glow to it. There is another one of those teal-skinned creatures, but it is inert. And there are four robots, which also seem to be inert. Uh, maybe we should uh, back out of here. Kaim just walks over to the burning brazier. Oh god. Of course he does. It's okay. like the aether moat is burning, but... Instead of burning, it's just glowing. Like liquefied? It looks solid, but the inside of it is all... wispy and moving around almost like a lava lamp or something like that. I'm just well, going to walk over to the it portal. Was nice seeing you guys. Gonna head back upstairs. Is there anything interesting about the portal like that I can read? Runes or anything? There's runes on it. Did I recognize it? No. Hannah play, are you going to get your cousin out of here? She has an arrow ready to shoot him if he goes any closer to Kaim that portal. Kaim's going to walk back. Now you're going to stick your arm in the portal. <laughs> I want to. <laughs> I will I shoot your arm off. I really, really I want to. I will shoot your arm off. And I won't heal it. And I'm going to take back those mushrooms and never make them again for you. But this is very clearly an active portal. Aren't you curious where it goes? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tarxian. Although it's sad that we can't report this and get more money. I was just um, thinking the same thing. How good a liar are you? I'm a great liar. Hmm. I I don't know much about Gilfi, but how far can she oh be God. away from you? What if it closes like the one that we went through? And he's Gilfi's like somewhere far, far away. Right. The, but if she's far, far away, does she just go back to the the Fey realm, wherever she is, wherever she goes? No, I mean. I can only communicate with her within all, like about a hundred feet or so. Oh. But I can see through her eyes at any distance. And then I can just pop her back into her own dimension at will. So what I'm hearing is you can have Gilfie go through, see through her eyes, and 
maybe determine where it just goes. Are you able to bring her back? Yeah. It will cost money, right? Mm, only if she gets hurt. So if you pop her back into her dimension, that doesn't cost money to bring her back? No. I can do it just snap my fingers. She goes to her dimension, and I snap my fingers, and she comes back. Can you use your little teleport thing to just throw Kaim into the portal? <laughs> no. I have to actually see where he's going to land, and it has to be on a solid surface that can support him. I mean, I'll... Uh... I, I think I'd probably go through if... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but... No. I don't know how Kaim feels about this Gilfi. He's already killed her once. Now he's trying to do it again? What's going on over here? It's up to an accident. It's up to my, Tercian. My, my concern would be what's, what? on the other, what's on the other end of this portal... And if we do send Gilfie through, who's to say that what's on the other side isn't going to follow where she came from and come back through to our side? How fast yeah. can you guys run? If there's like an office over there, there's actually other people, they could capture her or kill her. What if what? something goes through the portal and everything here activates, starts attacking us? Okay. There's a lot of unknowns. Okay, so let's go to the horses. And then follow through with the plan. But what if Gilfie is captured or killed when she goes through? Then I... we summon her again. But they would know, maybe someone could possibly use that information to know that we were here. I'm just thinking, worst case scenario, we've got a lot of gold waiting for us back home. And we'll I get look... it. Is Gilfie like an out of the Does it, she look anything different than every other damn barn owl in the world? <laughs> No. She just okay. looks like a normal barn owl. I mean... Like a gold chain necklace. <laughs> it's like... I mean, that's a risk. Can Gilf Does Gilfie always look like this? Could you change uh, the way she looks? Give her a hat. Or a robe. Yeah. Like, like, like Gilfie. Uh, like monocle. Simon, I mean. I mean, Gilfie could be a crab. Or an octopus. Or a snake, or a fish, be a seahorse. Wow, she could be anything. Okay. I think that if y'all decide on this, that going out of this location yes. before it happens would be a wise decision. I think I, I agree. I agree with you. Oh, okay. Damn. But I do think we need to go through that portal some way, one way or another. Oh, and then, like, I don't know, maybe she just goes through and and says, okay, I'm in a cave, and that's all the information you have that would really be too helpful. Oh, jeez, what's Tyrkseen doing over there? <laughs> Tyrkseen, what are you doing? I love it. Kime's already made me nervous. Is there anything down this hallway? Or is it just end here? It is a long hallway that leads very far in a random direction. Okay, so let's go back to the horses. We'll sit we'll sit down for a bit there. We'll have Turksian see through Kilfi, come through the portal, and see what's up. You'd want to go down these long hey, uh, minute hallways? Simon? You remember how I had you write something in the other cave in Dorvish? Oh. Yes. Could you write something on this floor? Actually, kind of where Egrith was killed? Yes. Could you write it in Dorvish again? Yes. Could you write Aethermote Thief? Yes. Thank you. That would be great. You are welcome. So y'all head back up? Yep. Yes.
Jets. Yes, we're chilling by Kessa and Ben and Jerry and Mike and Ike. All right. Do you leave all the papers and the robots? Wasn't sure what your plan was there. I will yeah, not yes. touch the robots. I think can leave him. had Urkheim grabbed whatever important ledger information that he found on his investigation, but the robots are all chilling. What do you do with Egreth? Oh yeah, we need her head. Do we? Yeah. Come on, Kaim. Oh, I feel so bad about this. No, you don't. Do you want me to do it? Give me that sword. Let Panoply do it. She's a she's good at skinning things. It's the same as any other animal. I will hand Panoply his sword. I Make sure she's kind of stretched out, and I totally probably dent that sword on the floor beneath as I chop her head off. It's magical. Cool. Good thing. Do you want me to roll a strength track? Sure. Hope you don't get caught with that. That's okay. Kaim's sword isn't exactly made for beheading things. So the first swipe at her head kind of just goes in four inches. And it takes Panoply like five attempts to detach the head from the body. Can we drag this body to the forge? Making a lot of weird noises. Actually, just leave the body. It's fine. Just leaving a beheaded body? Yeah. Did Simon write on the ground? Yes. Sweet. The Aethermote Thief. Alright, Ben and Jerry and Mike and Ike. Alright, keep us some company. Go to the horses. Uh, when you return, Kessa is leaned up against a tree, and as you approach her and the horses, without opening her eyes, she just says, Find anything interesting in there? Um, there's a portal in the basement. She just nods her head. We're going to send the owl uh, through, I think. So we're prepared to leave in a hurry in case that went poorly. Unless you have information about that portal. Perhaps. All right, let's start with where does it go? It goes somewhere that's not here. The Wallach State have any information about this entire factory? Yes. Are you going to tell us? <laughs> Shouldn't seem very forth forthcoming. Mm, no. I mean, I our... Do you think it's not a... I mean, it's going to be okay if we send the owl through. Is there stuff on the other side that's going to come through? You know what I mean? Is it a two-way door? Mm. Our experience with portals has been more of a one-way ticket. The owl should be fine. Do it. Why give us your portion of the gold? I have my reasons. I didn't think you were going to kill her. Um, 
I had our friend here write Aethermote Thief and Dwarvish just in case that could be like a false trail. So I don't know if you have any chips you want to throw in that direction, but... Yes. I... I will clean up. Thanks, Cal. And that won't work. Just why would somebody who has killed Eagbirth Runai write who they are on the ground next to her? Well, honestly, the dwarves are pretty blunt. And they didn't take any robots. And probably not very many notes, because we left a lot there, so... Pure and simple. You took our stuff, so we killed you. Give it a day, two days before the nation of Prospero sends prying eyes to this location. I have been informed that they learned somehow of a rough idea of where this factory is. Recently? Yes. Before we came here. Basically. Okay. That's all they, I wanted to check. Even though they put out a wanted poster, they knew roughly where Egreth was. They just don't like to do their own dirty work. We're taking the head back. Oh, so a beheaded body with the words the Aethermount Thief and Dwarvish next to her, even better. I still don't understand. Why would you pay us for a job you did? We were an excellent distraction, Kaim, you must admit. Yeah. I didn't do the job. You all got in there and brought her out. I mean, could you imagine going through the entire factory, killing every single construct, but every single construct, and then maybe getting to Egreth? Maybe she doesn't just go down a tunnel and escape through a portal? That's right, we're awesome. Fair enough. We were lucky. What? Sometimes you have to be lucky. Sometimes you create your own luck. Alright, is it Gilfie time? Owls away. You ready, Turxian? I guess so. Turxian will just sit down cross-legged with his back against the tree and uh, kind of go into a trance as he shifts his focus through Gilfie's eyes and has her fly through the portal ready to dismiss her the second he sees any sort of danger. Alright. Fly Gilfie down. finally get to the portal and Gilfie goes straight into that purple swirling arcane mess. On the other side you yourself feel incredibly nauseous. The 
idea of seeing through your familiar works in a normal timeline. But wherever Gilfie went, it does not follow the same parameters of time. Oh, shit. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, fuck. We're just a danger wizard. Okay. You lose your connection with Gilfie as you get visibly sick and then puke. Oh god, Tarzan! Before you lose your connection, what you saw through Gilfie's eyes, which was incredibly blurry, looked like a area full of grinding gears and cogs and various machines and robots and warforged and then you lost your concentration uh, as soon as I gain composure over myself. I want to um, snap my fingers and try and dismiss Gilfy. Wait six seconds and try and snap my fingers and have her appear by my side. Okay. And she appears by your side. I'll uh, telepathically look at her and share what I saw and ask if she saw anything else. Gilfie tells you that she saw a world or plane or place that defied all logic of magic as we know it. It looked like there were islands made of cogs and gears and clocks and whirling machines and flying ships and sentient machines and even flying mechanical creatures. that's all she saw before she returned to you. I will thank her profusely while scratching right behind her neck where she has a hard time getting. She does that owl thing where like cocks her head, head almost 90 degrees from her body. Basically turns into a perpendicular shape. Or right angle. Uh, look up the group and it, it's hard to explain, but imagine a plane where the entire thing is like the inside workings of a clock with spinning gears and Warforged and seem to be a almost sentient robots and constructs everywhere. I kind of can't envision it because he doesn't know what the inside of a clock looks like. I, Uncle Ishi would know where that is, I bet. I don't, though. No, oh, it's. It. It didn't seem like it's just the laws of the world were the same. Time, magic, everything was different. I, it's a good thing you didn't go through the portal, Kaim. 
Sounds like it would have been an adventure. Sounds like an amazing time. <sighs> and again, I don't know if I would be able to go through a portal. Honestly, the first time was rough. Plus, like, we haven't even explored that much here. That is true. Are we supposed to go back to town? Is that what our deal was? Yeah, we should probably just start heading back to town. And should we go by the on. road? Uh, if somebody's coming out, aren't we going to cross with them? Are you visibly holding a head around you or something? I think we Is should. Covered? Uh, I can wrap it and then maybe we could put it in that fancy sack that. Um, could we put it in the thing, Turxian? <laughs> I'll, be able to. I have yeah, I have burlap. Like I'll, here, it won't drip. It won't drip. And Kaim will look over to Kessa and ask, "What, what, what, what plan are you going to, or what do you plan on doing?" Clean up this mess so that there's less for the nation of Prospero to discover. Well, we surely would appreciate that. I think you underestimate how much the Volek state would appreciate it. Can I make an insight check? I want to make sure that she's really trying to cover our tracks and not pin Frame it on us. us. Yeah. Okay. Hard to read. Well, thank you for our, your help. Uh, anything we can do to keep Prospero off of us is uh, very much appreciated. Good luck. And the way you said that, it sounds like we may need it. Well, you wander around with the little robot that belongs to a very wanted individual. Well, hopefully someday we'll find him and Simon can be with his creator again. It's our goal, anyway. Admirable goal. Well, I think I am done resting. I'm sure I'll see you around again. Yeah, um, if you want to go for beers later or something, find me in town. Panoply just like rolls her eyes, turns around, gets on the horse. Don't worry, I'll be able to find you. Well, maybe not her. I might need to start bringing a light around with me. This makes you a target in the dark, you know. That's fine. You shoot at the light. I might not be there. All not right. Take gonna, blind sight. Gonna pack everything up. Time to go. Yep. Well, do, up I mean, go. seriously, though, do in like. After half a day, do we want to go off trail? It takes longer, but if somebody is coming here in a day and we're going that way, then we're going to cross paths with them. You are right. Yeah, yeah, let's go off. Um, there's something else we were supposed to do in this area. Kind of lost all sense of direction already. I mean, we could 
go look for the white stag, but I'm not sure what state this head will be in, depending on how long it takes to find yeah, it. Yeah, that might not be good. I don't think they'll care about what state the head is in. Uh, I think we will. <laughs> sh- I think Turkseen's bag will. I'm sure it's already <laughs> attracting flies. Not in there. I don't see the harm in trying to find the the moose and then head back to town that way. At least we'll have a reason to have something bloodied and we can um, put that in the bag and if they notice that, we'll just say we're on a hunt. It would be a rough day if somebody's searching your bag and discovers a bloody head. Why would they search? Uh, it was the moose in Tanyan Fall. I think it was the opposite direction, like south, but also yeah, it was west. in uh forest down here. Yeah, that's uh, the opposite way. Never mind. Uh, Never follow directions from me. I mean, we could go straight to Rolapa, but that seems counterintuitive to getting paid. Yeah, and not with a bloody head on our hands, where we can be incriminated at any moment. It's in the bag of holding. They can thing. still check it. Haversack, I suppose. Please empty your bags. <laughs> it falls out. Then, um, let's just make way to Night Hollow. We'll go off path, um, halfway through. Yeah, just, like, go... Half a day and then off path. Yeah, sounds good. All right, it's about six o'clock right now. All aboard. So, how long would you like to travel for? Six at night. Yes. Let's travel four hours. If we're drive, if we're if we're traveling four hours, I don't. We're gonna need to we really, long rest. Yeah, I don't know if we really want to travel much in the dark, though. Why not? I mean, if we're on the road, like we could go four hours on the road, then go off road enough to not be visible from the road, and then just stay off the road. I mean, I think we can all see fairly well in the dark, but I don't know about these horses. The last thing we really need is for one of them to trip and break their leg or something. These these are still rentals for you, aren't they? Or did you guys end up buying them? No, they're rentals. Just rented. I think. I mean, I think as long as we're guiding them and we're on the road, like, it's pretty safe. And we can get off of them to lead them into the the woods at night, like, for the last little bit, just to get off the road. You know what I mean? Okay. The road is oh. pretty good condition. Like, I'm assuming anyway, it's like a well-traveled road. The Nahusian passes. Yeah. So we'll just go up to there four hours and then get off and like you know travel i don't know even only half hour walking the horses would be fine just so we're not visible from the road i'm in lead the way okay let's go so it's just to clarify it is about eight hours from where you are to the nahusian pass Oh, well... I don't think we need to get off any sort of road then, right? If it's through the mountains, then there wouldn't be that many places to go off-road, right? I mean, just a, probably just a single pass. Yeah. Honestly, I almost think we should ride through the night then. I hate to say it. Oh. I think I'll be so exhausted if we do. Yeah, that's true. Our only 
course of action would be to rest now, risk anybody coming through the Nuhushin Pass while while we're passing, or we frisk it and um try to get through all the way. Could you guys sleep right now? I will stay. I can stay awake if you guys all want to sleep. Like if we just do six hours, get up at midnight and go. That way we hit the road by morning. Too weird? Is that too weird? You guys are... You gotta be like encourage more nighttime activity, you know? I was just tired. That was a long day. Alright, I'll call it. Let's let's push through. Or sorry, let's rest now and we'll push through tonight. Does that work? I'll stay awake. I can stay awake. Just tomorrow I'll be a little sleepy, but that's fine. That's fine. Oh, how long were we resting here? It's like, I'll wake you after midnight. You sure you want to do the full six hours? Yeah, I'll, sh I can... I'll share that with you. No, 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 no. Because you look terrible. Like, you still have blood on your face, dude. I didn't sure. get hurt at all. And, like, I didn't... Like, I don't have magic. Well, I do have magic, but... I'm just saying, like, I don't, it's not like Turksian's magic, you know, where he needs it. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, like, I could still shoot. It'll still be fine. I'm still not able to do a few things unless I take a long rest. I'm already laid down. You guys are still talking. Well, I'll just follow your lead, and I'll pull out a uh, bedroll and go to sleep. Pamphlet will take exhaustion and stay awake all night. So you guys aren't traveling at all, or how far are you traveling? We're not. We're staying here, resting. I'm going to wake them after midnight, after they get a long rest. I will take exhaustion, and then I'm just going to be tired the next day, and we're going to go like travel in the darkness toward the Hujin Pass, so we hopefully arrive on the road by like dawnish. Because it's eight hours, you said. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so like at eight in the morning, nine in the morning, and then like then it's at least daylight if we have to cut off road. Okay. Everyone, do me a favor and roll a d6. Oh no. Ah. Pairs and pairs. Okay. Uh, Panoply, roll a perception check. Okay. Um... As you are doing your routes and standing watch, uh, Kessa Linkoff does return. And she looks around and notices you aren't in the camp and kind of tries to listen for you. Um, make a stealth check. Hmm. Come on, that's advantage. That's 20, that's 20. A heads up to a 20. <laughs> she just shakes her head and 
drops something next to Simon. And then heads off in the night. Does Simon take it? Simon is turned off. I'm going to wait, like, a solid 20 minutes, and then creep up to see if I can see what it is. Uh, looks like a leather-bound satchel. I... it's in the light? Yeah. Very dim. I... What quickly and quietly as possible want to pull it back into the darkness. I mean, I assume it's lightweight. Like, a, just a little thing. Like a pouch. Uh, it's probably like 10 pounds. Okay, well, that's that's not too bad. I'm pretty strong. I'm just gonna pick it up and quietly back into the darkness and look at what it is. Um, it looks like a handful of books and scrolls and ledgers can i read any of them like uh, titles the books are more like journals so they're not titles but there is a letter in there at the very front and it's written in fairly elegant handwriting and it essentially says um Keep safe, keep hidden, return to Sabira and Erfonia. Um, they should find this interesting. Okay. I will try and package it up to be as it was when it was dropped there and then as quickly and quietly as I did before I want to place it gently by Simon and then go back in the dark okay rest of the night is fine y'all can hit the long rest button set me and I will how do I do this uh, I believe you have to roll a constitution saving throw Is also under um, conditions. Whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired, guys. Conditions. Um, I can't find the rule, but I believe you have exhaustion because you. Yeah, I, I added a level of exhaustion. I assume it starts at one and works down. So, if I get too tired, you can just lead my horse. I mean, with me on it. You need anything? You let me know. All right. What did you roll? You rolled a six. <laughs> Shitty. Okay. So whenever you end a 24-hour period without finishing long rest, you must succeed on a DC 10 con save or suffer one level of exhaustion. Becomes harder to fight off exhaustion if you stay awake for multiple days. And the it gets harder and harder to pass the test. And does exhaustion... It says exhaustion 1 gives disadvantage on ability check, so it'll be disadvantage on the next one. Yep. Uh, ability checks are not saves. Oh, okay. Never mind. Ability checks are like uh, any any skill check and any regular check. Any survival check to find your way through the woods without a path, for example. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's start making our way. Arvin, we lost him. Oh, we lost Arvin. 
I actually think that's a good place to stop for the night, though. Yeah. Yep, I'm cool with that. You all wake up at 2 in the morning. Simon finds a satchel next to him and looks at it and puts it in his little cubby hole in his belly. You all gather your horses right off into the night. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session.